I'm going to demonstrate how to put in a proper chest tube for trauma. The entire process should not take very long, and the setup should be very quick, and the actual procedure should take no more than just about two to three minutes or so. Uh, you want to be able to do this very quickly because the patients who need it, need it very fast. The indications for putting in a chest tube are a pneumothorax or a hemothorax that's a big enough size that somebody has decided that it should be drained. It is not to be used for tension pneumothorax because that is an immediately life-threatening problem and the proper management there is needle decompression of the chest. So, a few things to think about before you and as you are getting set up to do the chest tube. First of all, what size chest tube do you use? In trauma, there are two sizes, big and bigger. And what that means is 36 or 40 French. You can't use anything smaller because we assume that in trauma, any uh, indication for chest tube insertion means that there will be blood in the chest and if you use too small of a chest tube it will not be able to drain out the clots. The other thing that you can, should consider since every one of these we again consider that there will be blood in the chest uh, it's a good idea to hook up an auto transfusion canister to the side of your chest tube collection system so that any blood that is shed can be reinfused if needed. Now, let's talk about the proper technique. We'll move over here to Trauma Man, who is our mannequin. Now, after you've selected the tube size, and we'll use big, 36 French in this case, you need to chip, pick your location. Now, ideally, you would like to put this in about the fifth intercostal space, and in the either in the anterior axillary line or mid-axillary line. The easiest way to determine where the fifth intercostal space is in a male is that it is the soft spot right below the nipple, and so it tends to curve around like this. In females, there's quite a, quite a bit of variability, and an easy way to do it is to go over to the xiphoid process, the tip of the xiphoid, and move straight over, and that will also get you to the right spot. So in this case, what I'm going to do is to use the fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line. Now, I prefer to use a, an incision that is uh, perfectly transverse, and I'll just make this incision here. I prefer an 11 blade, some pe I'm sorry, a 10 blade. Uh, other people like an 11 blade. Now, the incision needs to be big enough so that you can get your finger in and feel around, because that is another key part of this procedure. So it usually needs to be about three centimeters in length, and you can kind of see that right here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to actually just feel around. I'll put my finger in so I can feel where the ribs are because what I would like to do is feel the rib and then go uh, on the rib right below there and just come right over the surface of it. So, the next thing that you do is to take a hemostat or a relatively fine-pointed instrument and in this case you will poke in and spread a little bit. Come out, poke in deeper, spread, pull out, deeper, spread. You keep on repeating and if you need to feel where you are, stick your finger in again just to make sure that you're right on the top of that sixth rib and then continue and finally you'll get deep enough where you come against the pleura. Now when you hit the pleura what you need to do is to puncture it obviously and you have to be very careful because it is possible when you puncture it. If you're just holding like this you can push in all the way and that's not a very good idea. So what I prefer to do is I put my fingers here on the clamp and uh, what, um, then what I do is I push in until my fingers, and my fingers will stop against the chest wall. And you'll generally hear a pop. And you can hear it right there. And then what you do is you stretch your clamp open to its full extent and pull it straight out of the skin like that. That way it makes sure that your pleural incision is as big as your skin incision. The next maneuver then is to put your finger in to the chest completely. And, and you should be able to feel where the hole in the pleura is. And you can also make sure that the lung is not adherent to the chest wall. If it is scarred up against the chest wall, then trying to insert a chest tube through that may cause quite a bit of bleeding and more damage than it's worth. And so you may re need to rethink your technique. Once you've made sure that the lung is not, that is a freak from that area, you can pull your finger back out. And now it's time to load your chest tube. And my preference is to actually load it so that it's on the back of this clamp. Now the reason I do that is so that when I release it inside the chest, it will actually pull out of the clamp. If I turn it around and do it this way, and then when I release it in the chest, it just kind of sits between the jaws of the clamp. And I can accidentally pull it out as I'm trying to pull my clamp out. 
So I will load the tube onto the back of the clamp. And then another important thing is to put a clamp on the other end of the tube. Because if, as we fear, they have some blood in their chest, it may come spewing out of the chest tube, hitting everybody else in the room. So now, I'm actually going to insert it into the chest. So, the key here is to make sure that the flat side of the tube, now it's, the flat is oriented vertically, and so I'm going to move that around, and that flatness needs to go right between the ribs. Sometimes people will do the wrong thing, and they'll turn it by 90 degrees, and it just won't go in. So the flat part of the tube needs to go straight in through the incision, and then through your hole in the pleura. And one of the other advantages to putting your finger in through the chest is you can feel where that hole is in relation to the skin, memorize where it is, so that you don't have to try to stick another finger in at the same time to figure out where it's going. Now, I like to direct these upwards, so I'll just gently push it upwards with my, t with my uh, instrument. And then once I've got it in uh, a comfortable distance, then I'll hold the tube and then unclamp the clamp and pull it out. And this is key, you do not want to pull your chest tube out as this is coming out. Some people uh, talk a lot about, oh, I want it directed anterior or posterior. The simple truth is that once the, the tube leaves your clamp, you have no control over where it goes. So now, once I've got it kind of where it's going, now I want to insert it so that the very last hole on the tube is inside the chest. I saw it go in, and the, there are generally markings on the chest tube that will tell you how deep it is. In most people with a normal body habitus, you'd like, it to, you'd like to see the 12 centimeter mark at the skin. If somebody is morbidly obese, they may need to have a higher number, uh, 16, 18, occasionally 20, to make sure that that last hole is within the pleural space. Another way that you can check to make sure your tube is in good condition is, first, unclamp it and see if it fogs as the patient breathes. If you see fog in the tube, that means it's probably in the right place. And a way to make sure that it's not kinked is that you can put the clamp back on and then rotate it like this. If it rotates freely, then there is no kink in the tube. If there is a bend in the tube, what will happen is it will go freely, it'll get tight, and then it'll suddenly release, go forward, and then you'll just get these jerky sensations like that. So once the tube is in place, the hole is in the chest, it's time to do two things. Hook up the collection system and sew it in. The collection systems, for some reason, <clears throat> all of these chest tubes have this weird end on them like this that do not fit well into collection systems. So most people will actually cut this with scissors so it's straight across or ever so slightly bubbled so that the Christmas tree connector on the end of the chest tube system will actually fit into there very nicely. Typically this can be secured further by using banding guns or some other uh, connection system. And then finally, it's just time to sew this up and put a nice dressing on it. Uh, Vaseline gauze is an option. Some people believe in it, uh, some people do not. It's probably not necessary in most people unless you've made a very, very large incision that you're worried about. Uh, once the, it is fully secured and you've got a beautiful dressing on it and it's hooked up, you're all finished. So that has been a summary of a, of a proper technique for inserting, inserting a chest tube. Um, uh, remember that it needs to be done quickly and that uh, you need to keep in mind your anatomy as you're doing it, making sure that you're doing it as safely as possible, and getting it well into the chest wall. Follow-up is that you must get a chest x-ray to make sure it is in proper position. If not, then you need to immediately readjust it so that it accomplishes what you hoped it would. Thank you.